Hey, if you didn't know, I have a new channel. So if you want, go subscribe over there. I know I would. So last time I talked about holograms and ended with the cheap cop-out of, well, these fancy headsets will do it someday, but I didn't really give this technology its due diligence. Augmented reality has always been seen as the sad, sickly cousin of virtual reality, and uh, it, there's a few reasons for that. But AR is actually a whole lot more than just having a swablu float around in your living room, or a Mario Kart be a Mario Kart. It's a lot more than just phone notifications popping up on stupid looking glasses. Now as a concept, AR is fairly simple. You have the real world and you superimpose digital stuff on top of it. The level and complexity of this implementation varies from product to product, but it's all technically AR. And just like all the other things I've talked about, this has had a history in predictions and futurism. A weird history. Most references I find for this tech from the 90s are from research in colleges using chunky computers and speculating on possible use cases. There were a few real-world attempts of creating these AR rooms, and they're cool, but it's a far cry from the kind of stuff you'd expect. Even though it might seem simple or a gimmick to some, AR is very complicated tech. I mean, just think of the logistics of this, especially from a 1990s perspective. You would need a camera to capture the image, which wasn't as readily available as today. You would need a computer with enough processing power to handle the uh, processing, and software that can accurately measure real-world images and place 3D objects in space. Doing all of this in real time. As you can see by these images, AR was a lot more complicated than just pulling out your phone. The first wacky prediction I find for AR is from this 2002 article in Scientific American. The predictions and ideas set forth here are more of a cyberpunk-esque dystopia with advertisements and sensory overload commonplace in the future year of 2010. The article also details real-world AR systems that were in place during the time, and yeah, they look like that. We find several potential use cases listed, including doctors doctoring and, you know, professional people doing professional things. Instead, the biggest AR use cases came with stuff like the PS2 and PS3 iToy systems. Cool tech, but mostly gimmicks, right? What's up, everybody? Damon here with IGN News. You need to prepare yourself. One day very soon, people are going to be walking down the street wearing Google Glass, and it's going to be weird. When you call grandma in Nebraska, the NSA knows. This is a wide, is indiscriminate net. They're not even looking for someone specific. When a call is made, Verizon turns over this information. The phone number, the phone system, the location. Yeah, Google Glass was in many ways the culmination of that technology proposed a decade prior. But when it was revealed, people didn't really like it. At first glance, it looked kinda kind of stupid. The tech itself was mostly dismissed as vapid and pointless. All of this data, the, the benefits of using Google Glass, could be provided by just looking at your phone. But what killed it in the end was the question of privacy. Yeah, so a few months after the Google Glass reveal, and right around the time the enterprise units were shipping, the big NSA leaks were coming out. This was a pretty big deal in 2013. The public became much more concerned with the influx of cameras and digital devices as Big Brother was big brothering. Google Glass played into this in all the wrong ways. The idea that at any time anybody could be watching you, filming you, it made people upset. In the end, Google Glass never really took off. It remained expensive and is mostly just a hyper niche market for enterprise and developers. But privacy concerns moved on pretty quickly, and by 2014, many had forgotten about the failures of this AR device. Instead, we were focused on a new promising startup, probably the first in the AR capacity that got a lot of attention. You might remember it, it was Magic Leap. 
a company and supposed product that had seen massive rounds of investment from major companies. And it really took off once this video came out. Yeah, as you can probably tell now, this isn't what AR was or would be in 2015, not by any capacity. This was concept footage that was shown off to investors, but many took it as the real deal. Around the same time, HoloLens by Microsoft was announced. A big fight was coming, and everybody would be in on this AR hype, right? No. Over the course of the next few years, the tones shifted quite a bit. Magic Leap kept getting more money, more investments, but no product seemed close to release. HoloLens fared a bit better, with actual dev units shipping in early 2016. As time went on, Magic Leap would see even more rounds of investments and no product release still. Many labeled it as vaporware, but eventually, in 2018, a product did ship. It also wasn't, wasn't that amazing. Of course, it didn't live up to the concept pitches from years prior. In reality, it was much closer to just being another HoloLens. Very expensive with a limited field of view. From reports of the time, Time, it seems like the software and the actual realism of the AR was flimsy at best. It's a sad turn of events for a technology that was predicted 20 years ago to come 10 years ago. AR did hit the mass mainstream pop culture. It just wasn't in the way you'd expect. This perception of AR has led most people to dismiss it as a gimmick because this is what most people use it for. The idea of having a computer wherever you are, placing a TV anywhere, changing the color of your living room, all with fancy glasses, that's still a futurist dream to this day. But what would it take now to make this stuff, well, work? The easiest, quickest answer is improve the field of view. And considering the leaps we've seen in the last couple of years, I imagine this is a real possibility. Get the price down, of course, more people get it, but at the same time, the software is really what's going to make this take off. Overall, AI and neural networks have definitely made the idea of true AR something more tangible. While more accurate placement could be solved by these technologies, it could also help to give us more realistic looking 3D models. Real-time graphics have come a long way since the early days of AR, but even now they don't quite look to the standard of the best looking real time graphics. The problem comes from the fact that it's not as simple as just placing one of these high polygon assets into an AR system and making it look convincing. A lot of the reason why this looks so good is due to the lighting. And while in a controlled virtual environment you can just manipulate the lighting as you want, ray traced or not, lighting in the real world is a little bit different. You would need augmented reality systems systems and software that determine the light input of an image and bounces in a single room and how to integrate that in real time. Basically, measure the lights of a room and accurately recreate that. Even in traditional CGI rendering, this kind of technology is really new. I've seen mentions of stuff like Weta Digital using lights of a scene and realistically implementing that information into a render, but this is on the best powerhouse computers and not in real time. It's possible in a couple of years that AR takes over enterprise, becomes a mainstay of professions, or replaces the smartphone entirely. The possibilities of this tech are limitless. Or, I guess we could just play with our swablos. Also, watch my other channel.